What is up everybody, it is I, Ronan, and today I'm coming at you with a learning how to play for a deck that is absolute garbage. Well, to be accurate, it's more the archetype that is absolute garbage. I did the best with what I had, but believe me when I say that this is not a good deck. It can set up a fairly powerful board if you open up with four freaking cards in hand, and it's just... This has been one of the least pleasant play experiences I've had in a while with just any of my videos, I think. I, I honestly think the last time I was this upset was like that pure gem night thing I made a while ago. But yeah, so we're talking about ninjas today. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and get right into this deck profile by ex explaining what you're supposed to do and then how you get there and why that is nearly impossible to do. So the idea behind the sort of ninja end board is to have Saizo, uh, your link monster, pointing at Dark Samorg with a anti-spell fragrance on the field, as well as some other floodgatey ninjutsu art, preferably Rust Mist. Uh, what this does is, effectively, the Samorg lock is Dark Samorg plus anti-spell fragrance. It makes it so your opponent pretty much cannot activate spells or traps. That is what it does. It's pretty powerful. Uh, Sizer lets you set the ninjutsu arts from your deck, so he's able to get things like Rust Mist, uh, which lowers the attack of special summon monsters by ha half. So basically the idea is, uh, if you have Sizo, who cannot be targeted for attacks or card effects because he's pointing to a monster, which is Samorg with an anti-spell, uh, the only way your opponent will be able to get over your Samorg is by having, uh, monster effects so that does provide a lot of good protection gives you a big boy to attack for some big damage and can potentially end the game in that board state uh now let's talk about how you get to that board state so as i said it is a entire four card combo that you have to go through so first you need a way to summon ninja grandmaster hanzo with a monster effect so that's either going to be yellow ninja or upstart golden ninja uh, in the case of Yellow Ninja, when it's normal summoned, you can special summon a level 4 or lower ninja from your hand in attack position or face down defense position. Uh, however, that does lock you into ninjas for the rest of the turn. So you can open it with this and Hanzo, summon this, get Hanzo out with that effect. That's one way to do it. Uh, Upstart Golden Ninja lets you discard a trap from your hand to special summon a level 4 or lower ninja from your deck and face up or face down defense position. So you need to have opened with Upstart Gold Ninja and a trap in this case. So already we have two cards down. Next thing you need is a Ninjutsu Art card. Uh, so thankfully that is generic and we do play a good bit of Ninjutsu Arts. Uh, this is the best part because it can be literally any Ninjutsu Art card uh, that you just so happen to have in hand. So that's all right. Uh, but that is still free cards. Now for the fourth. You need to hard draw your anti-spell fragrance. It is non-searchable, at least not in a fast way. Uh, there is some draw power in this deck, but that is all you would have. So yeah, you can't search this, so always run it at free. Now, with all that being said, I'll explain how the combo works. So first, you summon your Hanzo. Uh, doesn't matter how. Second, you use Hanzo's effect, because Hanzo is actually a really cool card. He gets two effects depending on how he was summoned. Uh, if he was normal or su if he was just normal summoned, you can add a ninjutsu art card from your deck to your hand. However, if he was flip or special summoned, you can add a new ninja monster from your deck to your hand, except for himself. So, because he was summoned by a monster, you get to add a ninja monster to your hand, which is going to be Twilight Ninja Jogan. Uh, Jogan is a pendulum monster, and the pendulum scale all he does is give ninjas piercing. However, what we want him for is because uh. You can special summon him from your hand by revealing a ninjutsu art card, which is why we needed that other one originally. Uh, so once he is special summoned, you use your Hanzo plus whatever you use to summon Hanzo to make your ninja grandmaster Saizo. It's a link to a monster, it's a warrior, light, requires two ninja monsters. And outside of the non-target ability when pointing at a monster, it also has the ability to set ninjutsu art spell traps directly from your deck during your main phase. Uh, it is a hard one to return though, so be aware of that. So with Hanzo, you will set your Ninjutsu Art of Transformation, assuming you don't have it already. Ninjutsu Art of Transformation 
when flipped, lets you tribute a face-up ninja monster to special summon a beast, wing beast, or insect monster from your deck or hand whose level is less than or equal to that mo the tributed monster's level plus free. Uh, Simorg is level 7, so if you are tributing your Jogan, you are definitely going to be able to get to that Simorg during your next turn. However, if you already have Art of Transformation, so you're fine, you can instead set Ninjutsu Art Notebook from your from your deck, assuming you have another ninja to work with in hand. Uh, it's a continuous spell that lets you discard a ninja monster from your hand to set a ninjutsu art directly from your deck. What you will be setting is ninja armor ninjutsu art of alchemy. Uh, so when it is activated, it destroys all ninjutsu art cards you control and then lets you draw two cards, hopefully getting you into your anti-spell fragrance. Uh... And yeah, that's basically the combo. Um, beyond that, we just have other ways to sort of protect it and like alternate targets for our transformation jutsus. Uh, we have Simorg, obviously. We have Yellow Dragon Ninja because it is spell trap removal. We have Black Dragon Ninja because it is also removal. It's just really shitty removal. Uh, so. I will actually go over this one, because he's not a good card. He's just the best thing this deck pure has going for it. Uh, it can't be normal. It can't be special summon except by the effect of a ninja monster or a ninjutsu art card, which is actually an effect on all of the dragon ninjas. Uh, and once as a once per turn is a quick effect, you can send a ninja monster and a ninjutsu art card you control from your hand uh, or from the hand to the grave. Uh, and if you do that, you can banish something on the field. Uh, however, when this leaves the field, um, those monsters come back. So be aware of that and protect him. Uh, White Dragon Ninja effectively just keeps it so ninjutsu art, or your spell and traps can't be destroyed, sorry. Uh, and just to go over Yellow Dragon, uh, it is a quick effect. Send a ninja monster and ninjutsu art card from your hand and or face it field to the grave to pop two spell traps. Uh... So yeah, it's pretty pretty basic. They're mostly alternate targets as well as a way to give us oh well as well as a way to let us run this trap, Ninjutsu Art of Super Transformation, which is another continuous trap, and it lets you target a face up ninja and a monster your opponent controls, send them both to the graveyard, and if you do, special summon a dragon, dinosaur, or sea serpent monster from your deck, whose level is less than or equal to the combined original level of the monster sent with this card's effect. However, if this card leaves the field, banish that monster. So it gives us targets for that. It's pretty good removal. It targets, but then it sends, so it's fine. Uh, yeah, so run that at really any amount. I like having it at two. Uh, next up, in order to protect our ninjutsu arts, we have the Imperial Customs Trap, which basically just says it's the only continuous trap that can be destroyed. Uh, yeah, it's pretty cool, honestly. I really like it. Uh, it protects your ninjutsu arts from Armor Ninja 2 Art of Alchemy as well, so that's pretty cool. Uh, lastly, for a little bit of recovery, we have our one. We have free cards for recovery, as you say, sorry. Uh, we have our one of Hidden Village of the Ninja 2 Arts. Uh, it has several effects. Uh, the first is that when a ninja is summoned to your field, you can target a ninja monster or a Ninja 2 Art card in the grave to put it back in your hand. However, you can't use it that turn. Uh, and if a ninja monster you control would be destroyed, you can banish a ninja from the graveyard instead. It's very searchable, so it's fine to have it at one, but it's decent recovery. We also have Twilight Ninja Getsuga the Shogun. Uh, Getsuga Turbo is honestly something I should have made, because it is way better. Uh, but yeah, basically it can be tribute summoned by tributing one ninja. Uh, and if it's an attack position, you can switch to defense, revive two ninja monsters with different names. So... Yeah, no, it's uh, honestly a really good card. It's very cool, and building a deck around it seems like it'd be a fun idea. Uh, yeah, and I think that is all of the main deck. Uh, the extra deck is pretty simple. Uh, obviously, already went over Saizo. We have our Nightmare Package for removal, Boral Sword in case we feel like OTKing, Boral Load in case we feel like stealing, Avramax because it wins games, uh... Several rank fours because this deck is actually decent at making them if you have your upstart golden ninja. So we have Emerald for recovery, Baguska for stall, Blade Armor Ninja because 
yellow ninja locks us into ninjas and this gives us more options than Saizo. And a Utopia set in case we need to beat over anything super huge. Uh, and then lastly we have the side deck which isn't anything too unique. Uh, we have free Gamma Seal for our turtley Gamma Seal turtle goodness. Uh, free Ash Blossom in case we need to stop a search. Two Lightning Storm in case we want to go second. Free Called by the Grave in case we feel like we need to stop hand traps. Free defense zone for a little extra protection for our continuous traps. And one red reboot in case we run into a trap heavy matchup. Because before we go into the replay, and I will say it's not a great replay because it is the best I could get. You'll see the problem with this deck. Uh, there are two choke points in the combo. Your hand doesn't leave you. It, any room practically to protect your plays and just in general monster effects out this pretty thoroughly and you have to go first so you know what you guys will see all of those problems in the replay uh i will see you guys there all right welcome to the replay with superboy 1 million i'm guessing we are tab as usual and uh as, this is full combo this is full combo uh we have a ninjutsu art card in hand a trap to drop for upstart golden ninja and we have hard draw on the anti-spell fragrance so we have all of the cards we need as well as getsuga for something i guess but uh we're gonna see what happens with that so let's go and get right into it starting with our opponent who is playing um if the fossil die and it tells you anything a high skill deck uh so he is unfortunately going to go first. He dualities, uh, searching the Tenki. He's going to go ahead and activate the Tenki to get another Yosenju. Uh, then he is going to go ahead and set the Fossil Dyna, as well as two face downs to deal with our spell traps. Uh, so we are kind of screwed here because our ability was stopped because we can't special summon monsters. And even if we had yellow here, we would not be able to special summon past the Fossil Dyna. So, yeah, that's our play done. All we can really do is set and hope, but then he has all this spell trap removal. Uh, so that's about the end of us. Uh, then he's just going to... Well, I'm sure you guys can all see where this is going at this point. Uh, he's just going to start going in with the Yosinjus, and we are more or less helpless to stop it because... Uh, a lot of these monsters don't do anything in hand. Uh, so yeah, that's um, right about game, I believe. He's going to go ahead and search the uh, secret move. And that's game. So, uh, yeah. If you can set up the lock with this deck, it is very powerful. The issue is setting up the lock because you have to open up with four cards and you can't protect your plays really. And there are two choke points for the strategy, which is, as you saw, your initial summon of uh, Hanzo, which we were not able to do, as well as stopping Saizo from setting a ninjutsu art to your field, because that shit is necessary. So, if you want to try to pull off this and do it well, there are better ways to do it than pure ninja. Uh, if you want to play Pure Ninja, go for Getsuga Turbo. It's a cool deck that makes lots of rank 4s, and it is much more fun. Uh, don't play this deck unless you want to feel frustrated at most turns. I will warn you that outright. It is such just... It's a, it's a high-risk, high-reward situation is, I think, the biggest issue where... You really have to play for a lot of risk in order to get the reward, which is admittedly pretty cool, which is, you know, locking your opponent out of spell and traps. The downside is that is also very meta-dependent, and in a meta with lots of monster effects being the thing, uh, it just can't do enough. Uh, yeah, so if you like four, if you like four-card combos and, uh, you are a fan of anime, I'd, I'd say this deck is for you. Uh, just don't expect to win much with it. But uh, yeah, all that being said, that will be the video. Uh, let me know 
if I did anything wrong with this deck, because I'm almost certain I did, uh, how it can be better and ways to make it just more consistent while hopefully remaining a pure ninja build. But uh, yeah, all that being said, like if you liked, comment if you had something to say, and subscribe if you want some more. This has been Ronan, signing off.